what have you learned about building other greater leaders and sales teams, Sarah? Great question. Mm. Great question. Um, I feel like when I moved into a leadership position at Microsoft, I had massive imposter, right? I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. I should, I don't belong here. Um, and I think, you know, we all, we all have that. Um, and I think I was leading people at the time in my first leadership role at Microsoft that had had 10 years, 25 years at Microsoft. So that was a bit daunting because it kind of felt like they should be my leader. I shouldn't be their leader. And, and, and I treated it um, as an opportunity to, to really identify what does every person in my team need from me? How can I help them be successful? Um, how do I create that psychological safety where they feel I've got their back? Um, and I give them enough safety to try and test and learn and fall over and pick themselves back up again. Um, what you see is what you get with me. So I think there's no there's no pretense. And I genuinely care. I really care. I think we spend so much time at work. And it's really important to me that, that people see me for who I am and what I can bring to them. Um, and I, as I said previously, I don't have all the answers. I don't, I don't know everything. Um, and so to surround myself with amazing people um, is, is really important. Um, and I think the other thing that I really look for in the team is people who are hungry, who, who have got that aspiration to dig deep, to learn, to try new things. And I think if you can create that culture, which has got that psychological safety, but also that innovative ability where everyone's got an equal voice and everyone feels heard, that's where the magic happens. Um, and that, that's what I try and create um, in the teams that I lead. Beautiful. How are you marrying all the carrying, Sarah? Carrying with coaching? Yeah, I think, I think it's a regular question right now, right? And I think particularly with COVID, I think we've all really accelerated into that, that caring mode. Are you okay? What's happening at home? How can I help? How can I support? Balancing that with, hey, we've got targets, we've got big numbers we need, to, we need to achieve, this is what is expected of us. And there's an absolute fine line, fine balance. Um, and I think, you know, at, over the last few months and now coming up for two years, I think what we've, what we've realised or what I've realised personally is creating that clarity is so important. Mm. You know, what is expected of you, Venkat? What, is, what does good look like, but what does great look like? And, and what's stopping you from getting to great. Right. Um, and I think being really clear mm. and encouraging and, and saying, hey, you've got this, you know, I believe in you, you can do that. You know, all of those, you know, firm affirmations that are really going to help that person feel, yeah, I have got this and I can do this. Um, I think really creates that self-belief that people can, uh, can achieve it. Mm. And, and where people can't, I think there's so many different scenarios if I think about in the last last 24 months as an example people have had personal stuff go on and deaths in the family marriage breakups you know everyone has has had their dramas and I think having that that listening ear that caring and making sure that we're support, putting the right support um, in front of our teams and helping them recover and get over that and then leaning on the team and making sure that we can move forward is, is really important and some people you know they want to change or they want to pivot and, and I'm totally supportive of that but I think it's going in with that coaching mindset, really getting to the crux of what is the challenge here for you? Right. What can I do to support you? And more importantly, what do you think the answer is? Mm. What do you need to be successful? Um, really, really helps navigate that coaching and caring motion. Excellent. How does that help in keeping people accountable? What have you learned about mm. keeping people accountable, Sarah? Yeah, I think coaching is, is a great notion. And I think it's a word that it's, that's you know, founded very, very often. And um, I recently just put myself through um, the ICF um, coaching accreditation. And, and this has really unlocked something in me that, that perhaps was there, but not structured and formed in a way that, that has been, been able to me to use in, in a practical way. Or I've not had the confidence to be able to execute on it. Um, but basically, creating that accountability is not you and I connecting and, and me saying, right, Ben Cat, you need to do A, B, C, D. Okay, you got that? And you're going, mm, yeah. I'm going, Ben Cat, okay, we've got a gap here. You know, you recognize the gap? Yes. What do you think is causing the gap? So having those open ended questions and then asking, well, Ben Cat, what ideas do you have to, to close this gap? Or what, what plan do you have? And you know, and I think having that open-ended question is putting it back on you. 
And also making sure at the end of that coaching conversation is saying, okay, Venkat, what are the next steps from here? Please take me through them. Mm. And that is really then triggering that person to go, okay, right, what is that plan? And, mm. and verbalizing that back. Um, and I find that that really creates that accountability mm. because they've shared openly what they're going to do. And then the next question is, so Venkat, when will you get part A done? And that's where it kicks in. Yeah. Beautiful. 